الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله الواحد القهار العزيز الغفار وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم صل وسلم عليه في الأولين وفي الآخرين وفي المرء الأعلى يا رب العالمين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and abundant praise and we beseech him subhana to send his peace and blessings upon our master the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who Allah sent as a mercy to everything that exists his family, his companions and those who follow him until the end of time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْ يَتَنَافَسِلْ مُتَنَافِسُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and for this, let people struggle. In the last two weeks, on the hors d'oeuvre tray of consumers, we witnessed the birth of the iPad. The iPad is iCool, sold more than over a million units in less than a week and a half. In three days, three billion apps were downloaded for the iPad. And since my return to America, which was yesterday, at 1600 hours, I've seen more than three or four sightings of the infamous pad. That got me thinking, and I started to read in the newspaper. There's nothing wrong, by the way, with having an iPad, so if you have one, don't get nervous. 
I was reading in the newspapers about how people reacted to the birth, the wilada of the iPad. And I came across some interesting statements of people. There was a guy named Frank. He spent the night in his car just so he could get in the line, to be in the line, to be in the line, to get the iPad. There was another individual who slept in front of the store in a sleeping bag to, so, so that he could or she could get an iPad. People were losing their minds, to be honest with you, and some of them became quite rapid in their infatuation with the new pad. So that got me thinking about, as Allah says in the Quran, وَأَنَّ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى وَأَنَّ سَعْيَهُ سَوْفِ يَرَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Surah Al-Najm that people are going to receive what they struggled for. And indeed that effort that they made will be witnessed. And I started thinking about paradise and how people begin to debate about the iPad to unlock or not, to unlock or lock, that is the question. And this discussion around, you know, the benefits of unlocking it and so on. So I started to think about I Jannah. So my khutbah today is on I Jannah. Because indeed, we have to ask ourselves as Muslims, if we find this excitement and this happiness for the mata'ah of this dunya, for the affairs of this dunya, but we don't find an excitement and a happiness in our hearts for the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, استجيبوا لله وللرسول إذا دعاكم لما يحيكم as Allah says in the Quran, answering this call to goodness, as Sidi Zaruq rahimahullah and others mentioned al arifun billah, this is a sign of a very intense sickness in the heart. When someone is moved and motivated by this dunya, but they're lazy and relaxed when it comes to the affairs of the hereafter, then they have to be careful. We ask Allah to protect us, inshaAllah. Wa ihya qulubana bi ma'rifati iyyah. We ask Allah to protect us from that. Then he said, that's a sign of a very serious ailment in the soul. I Jannah is very interesting. Just as people are debating how to open or unlock, actually it was unlocked in less than 24 hours, the iPad. It's not a mystery how to unlock I Jannah. There's no you know, ambiguity about how to open I Jannah, how to enter I Jannah, and play with the unlimited number of apps found in I Jannah. These apps were created by Al Khaliq subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet said, there are certain areas of Jannah which Allah has created with His own hands waiting for people. And there are doors to Jannah which are locked. Imam Mubarak Puri, he said in his explanation of Tirmidhi's excellent collection, he said, Kullu abwab al Jannah mughlaqa. Every door to paradise is closed. Wala tuftahu illa bi ta'ati rabbiha. And they will not be opened except with the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about the gates of Paris, paradise, inna fil jannati thamaniyatu abwab. He said in a sound hadith that paradise has eight doors. In another narration, which is an authentic narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَدِي He said, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, مَا بَيْنَ نِسْرَعِينَ مِنْ مَصَارِعِ الْجَنَّةِ He said, مَا بَيْنَ نِسْرَعِينَ مِنْ مَصَارِعِ الْجَنَّةِ مَا بَيْنَ مَكَّ وَبَصْرَةِ وَرَوَاهُ الْبُخَارِي The Prophet said that the distance between the doors of paradise that they have between each other is the distance between Mecca and Basra. And another narration which is also authentic, Related on one of the on behalf of one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, "Walaqad dhukirna, dhukir dhukir alana." He said, "Indeed, it was mentioned to us that the distance between the distance of the doors of paradise, arba'ina sana, is forty years." So these amazing abwab and this amazing I Jannah, we've seen the specs on the iPad. What are the specs of I Jannah? If we go to the Quran, brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Jannah in some incredible ways. For example, He says subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Taha. He says, إِنَّكَ أَلَّا تَجُعَ فِيهَا وَلَا تَعْرَى وَأَنَّكَ لَا تَضْمَأُ فِيهَا وَلَا تَضْحَى He says subhanahu wa ta'ala when He was talking to Adam and his wife in Surah Taha, 
Allah describing paradise to them says that you will never go hungry in paradise. And you will never, be, you will never experience any type of sunburn. You will never, excuse me, you will never uh, experience hunger, nor you will ever experience any nakedness. And you will never be thirsty, and yet you will never be exposed to the sun's light. You will never be sunburned. This in Arabic is called Al-Muqabala Al-Bad'iyya, in rhetoric, in Arabic. And how we have to move beyond just looking at the Qur'an as we look at, you know, for example, new moon or something. Uh, a crazy girl in love with a wolf man and a vampire. But move beyond that and engage the Qur'an as a text that's a powerful text that pulls us into its discourse, engages us as readers. And here's an example. Because this muqabila, as the ulama of rhetoric said, is an interesting concept in the Arabic language, where things are compared and contrasted which are opposite to each other to direct you to something that's mantuq la mafhum, something that's understood in the Qur'an. Not every meaning of the Qur'an is explicit. Many meanings in the Qur'an are inferred by a reader who's engaged, whose heart is involved with the Qur'an. And here's an example. Scholars begin to discuss this. What is the relationship between hunger, yani thirst, uh, hunger, excuse me, and not having clothes? What's the correlation between thirst and sunburn? So Imam al-Zamakhshari rahimahullah ta'ala and his kashaf as well as others. And now you have to pay attention. If you're tired, you didn't have that good cup of coffee or that nice hit of that put, that uh, dud pati, st stay awake brother and listen. Because you're going to like this. And sister. He says subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will never ever be hungry there. And you will never ever be naked. You'll never be thirsty. And you'll never be exposed to sunlight. Because there's no sun in Jannah. The only light in Jannah is the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the ulama commented and they said, what's the correlation between these four things? So one of the great scholars, he said the correlation is this. That hunger, hunger is an inward faqr, is an inward poverty. And not having clothes is an outward poverty. Being thirsty is an inward weakness and heat. And being exposed to sunlight and sunburn is an outward weakness involving heat. He said, as though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking these four separate concepts and telling you one thing, that everything you want in paradise, inwardly or outwardly, is taken care of. Don't worry about anything. Nothing can compare to that. Nothing can compare to that. And that's why the hadith, which is an authentic hadith, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amara Jibreel, he ordered Jibreel to go and look in paradise and see paradise. And he came back and he said, what do you think about it? He said, no one will hear about this except they will want to go there. No one will hear about this place except by Allah you want to go there. How to open these, this eye Jannah? The eye pad was open in 24 hours. How many of us have sat down and asked ourselves as Muslims? We've taken account of ourselves. Is my eye Jannah open? Or is like one door closed, one door maybe open? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said in a beautiful hadith, مَا أَنْفَقَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ زَوْجَيْنَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Nobody will spend in the cause of Allah, except he will be called from the abwab of Jannah, and they will say, Hada khayr, this is good for you. In the, the riwayah of Nasa'i, it will say, Ya Fulan, O oh, oh person who spent in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Hallim, come forward, fadkhul, and enter paradise. And then he said, Faman kana min ahli salah, du'iya min babi salah. And it was from the people of prayers, he will be called from the door of prayer. Waman kana min ahli jihad, du'iya min babi jihad. And who was from the people of jihad, He'll be called from the door of jihad. وَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الصَّدَقَةِ دُعِيَ مِنْ بَابِ الصَّدَقَةِ And whoever was from the people of charity, he will be called from the people of charity. The first app or door that we should want to unlock, which is the master key, the master key to opening the doors of paradise, is the key of faith. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ مَاتْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Whoever dies, he believes in Allah and the last day, he will enter paradise من أي أبواب الثمانية تشاء. He will enter into any of the eight doors of paradise 
which he likes. This hadith is related by Imam Ahmed, wa Hassan li ghayri. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to Mu'adh ibn Jabal, when he sent Mu'adh to Yemen, the last time Mu'adh saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Prophet told him, Ya Mu'adh, perhaps next time you will not see me. And Mu'adh, he began to cry. One of the last things that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, as related by Ahmed, is he said to him, Miftah al-Jannah la ilaha illallah. He said that the key to opening paradise, Mu'adh, is la ilaha illallah. In the narration of Utbah ibn Ghazwan, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, excuse me, al-Hadrami, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to me, Ala ibn Hadrami, he said, Iza su'ilt, if you ask, about Miftah al-Jannah, about the key to paradise, how to unlock ay Jannah, he said, tell the people, Miftahuha la ilaha illallah, that the key to paradise, the way to unlock Paradise is la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi afdaru salati wa salam wa taslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith which the ulama differed over. Some of them said this hadith is strong, some said this hadith is weak. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came one day upon his companions. And he told them, raise your hands and say la ilaha illallah. So they all said in unison, la ilaha illallah. And they said it a few times. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he raised his hand and he said with him, La ilaha illallah. Then he said, Alhamdulillah. Allahumma ba'athani biha. Yani biha lihi al-kalima. Wa amartani biha. Wa a'atani biha al-jannah. Oh Allah, you sent me with this La ilaha illallah, this statement, La ilaha illallah. And you ordered me with this statement, La ilaha illallah. And you promised by this statement, al-jannah. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to them, Ala ubashiru faqad ghafar Allahu lakum. Then the Prophet said to them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, should you not receive the good tidings that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has forgiven you of your sins. La ilaha illallah means more than there is no God but God. There is no way that Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu and people like Malcolm al-Shabazz rahimahullahu ta'ala and generations and generations of people who become Muslim, they did not become Muslim because there's no God but God. But they became Muslim because La ilaha illallah has a profound impact on the life. It touches every aspect of the person. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, he said to his companions, Jaddidu imanakum, in the sound hadith, renew your faith. I'm sure many people come to Shaykh Faqih, Hafizahullah, and other great scholars. And they asked him, my iman is weak. How can I strengthen my iman? How can I strengthen my faith? Here's an antibiotic from the greatest tabib, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest physician, the physician of the hearts. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a sound hadith. He said to his companions, Jaddidu imanakum, renew your faith. And they said to him, how do we remove our renew our faith? He said, "Akthiru min qawli la ilaha illallah." He said, "Say la ilaha illallah in abundance, and Shallallahu Taala, your faith will be strengthened." So the first step to unlocking I Jannah, and the first major step, the master key is faith, iman, and iman comes from what which means security, tranquility. Wa amanahum min khawf. And the Prophet was Ameen. Why? Because he's someone you can bank on in the fourth quarter, not like Kobe. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has rooted this word faith in security, in tranquility, because the relationship with him subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a sound hadith, he said, Man shahida an la ilaha illallah. Whoever bears witness, la ilaha illallah. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the slave of Allah and his messenger. And that Isa alayhi afdaru salati wa salam. Abdullahi wa rasooli wa kalimatuhu alqaha ila maryam wa ruhum min. The Prophet said, and whoever bears witness that Jesus is the messenger and slave of Allah, the speech of Allah given to Maryam, his mother alayhi afdaru salati wa salam. وَالنَّارُ وَجَنَّةُ حَقُّ وَالنَّارُ حَقُّ And that paradise is true, and that the hellfire is true, he said, أَدْخَرُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter him min abwab al jannah from the gates of jannah which he likes which he chooses that person so the first step in opening ay jannah unlocking ay jannah the big question in the middle east where i live now how to unlock the ipad how to unlock jannah should be the first question of the person the first step is to have sound faith how to have sound faith number 1 is to study and not to study too deeply but to focus especially on the Quranic method of creating the believer. To look at the statements of the Prophet ﷺ and let them write themselves on our, on our hearts as though they're a white can canvas. Number two is to have good friends and good companions. People that will be with you. Allah help the Prophet with his help, divine help, and with the aid of the believers. Number three is to practice, to be involved in the community. We cannot have an armchair type of mu'min. We cannot have a lazy believer. The Prophet said, Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from laziness. And that comes from a number of areas. Number one, shaitan says, Ah, Sheikh Faqih is there, it's enough. Sister such and such is there, it's enough. They don't need me to get involved. La, this is not the attitude of the believer. Or shaitan causes us to be arrogant and look down on the masjid and look down on the community. As though we're the mufti al-anam, wa as though we're the greatest Muslims and we have the right to judge others. All of these are tricks from the ways of shaitan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yudkhilana fi ay jannatina. Kama nas'aluhu subhanahu wa ta'ala an yaftah lana abwabaha bi ghayr al-hisab. Wa salli lahum ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah alaykum fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه أئمة الصالحين وسلم تسليما كثيرا على من تبعهم إلى يوم الدين. There are so many apps that I over prepared. I over prepared the khutbah. I only have thirty minutes. But the number of apps that come with I, the iGen in comparison to the iPad, it's impossible. It would be like comparing the stars in the heavens to say the fingers on our hands, if you wanted to compare the apps in iGen and iPad. But another way to open iGen to unlock its secrets is with ta'a, with obedience to Allah. La ilaha illallah is a contract. And a contract doesn't come without conditions without shurut and arkan. One of the great salaf, he was asked, Alaysa la ilaha illallah miftahu jannah? As related by Imam al-Bukhari and wasalahu fi tarikhihi, he was asked, is not saying la ilaha illallah the key to paradise? Some Muslims, we have this attitude. I say la ilaha illallah, I can treat people like garbage. I say la ilaha illallah, ah man, these kuffar, who cares? La ilaha illallah, man. Wallahi bi'sa ma sana'at. And little has this person understood the religion. In fact, when the Prophet said Mu'adh ibn Jabal to Yemen, as related by Muwatta and his uh, Imam Malik and his Muwatta, he said that the last thing I heard from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Ya Mu'adh khaliqin nas bi khuliqin hasan. The last thing he told me is O oh, Mu'adh, treat everyone well. And how many ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ are linked faith and good etiquettes and behavior like birds' wings. You cannot have one or the other. Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir falyaqu khairan aw liyasmut. Prophet said, whoever believes good, in the, whoever believes in Allah and the last day, let them speak well or remain silent. How many of us have practiced that? Imam Ibn Hajj al-Rahimahullah says in al-Fat, he says, look how the Prophet ﷺ links iman and behavior. Because behavior is practice. Muslims are not like Alan Iverson. We practice. We don't make excuses for ourselves. But how many of us have used shahada, saying la ilaha illallah, and used our Islam to justify being evil in this society, man? How little have we understood the ramifications of that contract with Allah? When the Prophet said, innani ala ahdika wa wa'adika mastata'at. He said, the Prophet said, Oh Allah, on the contract that I've made with you, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, I'm doing my best. 
So the first, after faith, important key we can talk about to unlocking I Jannah is Salah. And the Prophet said, Miftah Jannah, Salah. The Prophet said in a hadith, which is sound, he said, the key to paradise is Salah. The key to paradise is Salah. And I'll mention one hadith of the Prophet about Salah, and then I'll move on. But actually, I prepared 27 blessings of praying in the masjid. Based on Qadi ibn Abi Bakr al-Arabi, his explanation of the Muwatta, he mentions 27 blessings to pray in the masjid. And then at the end he says, are these not the 27 blessings that the Prophet said is for the one who prays in jama'ah in the masjid? Sister, don't tell your husband, if you love me, don't go to the masjid. No, no, baby, if you love me, you go to the masjid. Don't tell him, well, if you love your kids, you're going to stay home and watch Barney with them. No, no, no. If you love your kids, man, you're going to go to the masjid and in sujood, you're going to pray that Allah will make your kids protected in this dunya and the hereafter. That's the sound understanding of the Muslim. And brothers, if your wife says, I want to go to Fajr with you, don't say, Astaghfirullah Azim. No woman going to the masjid. Think about the statement of Abdullah bin Umar related from the Prophet who said, do not prevent the women from going to the masjid. And one of the students of Abdullah bin Umar said, I'm not letting my wife go to the masjid. And Abu, uh, Abu, Ibn Umar almost hit him. So how can you say that in front of the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Salah. The Prophet said in a sound hadith that praying in the masjid and making wudu correctly, he said, is better than praying alone 27 darajah. And I'm not, I'm not saying daraja in English on purpose to get your attention. Because I want you to understand this word. Daraja, daraja, daraja. The, the ulama of Azhar said, a long time ago, every step you took to the masjid, one of the daraja of good deeds was given to you. Now they say every time the tire turns, you got four tires, you're real lucky. Every time the tire turns, brother going to go by 18 wheeler now. Every time the tire turns, or the sister, but don't do with interest. Every time the tire turns, how many hasanats you get? So the Prophet said, Daraja. And this is something we say in Masr, Haga Azim Awi. This is something beautiful. We say in America, this is straight lace on. Pay attention here that the Prophet said 27 Daraja. He didn't say 20, 27 rewards or 27, you know, good deeds. He said Daraja. Daraja means level stations. So you want to go to the 10th Daraja in the elevator, you click it. Commenting on this Al-Mujaddid Ibn Daqiq Al-Eid from Egypt, one of the great ulama of this ummah, which many people don't know about. He was a Mujaddid Bittifaq Al-Ulama. He said from the Mishkat of Nubuwa that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said 27 levels to show you that when you pray, you are someone who's honored, your station is raised. And every time you pray, you draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nearer to His blessings as though subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised you by your salah to be closer to Him. And in order to ascend something, you have to make a struggle against your soul. So it's, an, it's a kinaya, as we say, it's an inference that the person who prays in jama'ah has climbed the mountains and hills and valleys of their soul and defeated their sins and risen to the obedience of Allah. That's why he said, alayhi afdalu salati wa salam, daraja, and not ajr or ujuran. Alayhi afdalu salati wa salam wa taslim. And that's why al-arifun billah, they said, as-salatu mi'rajul mu'min. That's why those who know Allah, they said that prayer is the mi'raj of the believer. Another way to open our jannah as I finish, is to have good relationship with each other man. Not to undervalue that. I see Muslims who got their relationship with Allah, great. But their relationship with their families, and we ask Allah to protect us all. But their relationship with their families is like people on judge duty. Better yet, like people on MMS, mixed martial arts. Each one to wait for the other one to tap out. But that's not the way the families are, man. The usra in Islam, the family unit in Islam. What more ahlaka bil salati wa stabir alayha. Allah says, order your families to pray. I know some people that say, Alhamdulillah, I haven't talked to my son in 10 years. And they get all proud about it. I say, you're a fool, man. And then this is the same brother that will come to me and say, I don't know why my son doesn't love me anymore. Or vice versa, the youngster. 
He, he, he goes Steve Urkel on his mom and dad. Yeah, my parents don't know anything. My parents don't know anything about anything. The Prophet said, whoever is good to his mother and father, in the hadith related by Ahmed, which is Hassan Ghairihi, will enter any door of paradise he wishes. And in that dua, Rabbanani Sagira, oh Allah, as they took time in that ayah of Quran to nurture me and raise me with tarbiyah. The dua is a reciprocation of good treatment of the mothers and fathers to their kids. And the Prophet said that every Monday and Thursday, the doors of paradise are open. And it said, forgive all the servants of Allah, except those who have problems with each other. And then he said, let them wait until they can solve their problems with each other, and then we'll forgive them. Husbands and wives, man, have issues from six, seven years ago or longer. Brothers in the masjid, man, haven't talked to each other for a long time over some dunya, over some trifling business issues. So your sins are waiting for you to come back to each other, man, and reconcile the problems that you have with each other. And then that mercy of Allah will descend on you. The last, and there are many apps to iJannah. Those of you who came late, we talked about the iPad. But something better than the iPad, homie, that's the iJannah. How to unlock it. What's the key to unlock iJannah? So he mentioned a few of them. Faith, salah, being good to people. The last is to be patient in times of adversity. And one of the most difficult challenges, and we ask Allah to protect all of us, is to lose your children. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as related by Imam al-Tirmidhi, with a sound chain, a man came to him with his son. And he said to the Prophet, Uhibbu, I love my son. Some time later, the man, he started to come and his son was gone. The Prophet ﷺ inquired, what happened to your son? He was told that the man, his son died. And that man was patient with this test from Allah. And he held. And then the Prophet said to him, will you not be happy that when you go to paradise, any of the gates of paradise you go to, illa wajattahu, except you're going to find that son waiting for you there. And he said, yes, yaftahu lak. And that son will be running to you and he will be opening the gates of paradise for you. And then he said in another narration, Alahu khas abikulina ya Rasulullah qala bal bikulikum. The man said, Is it only for my son? Or is it for all the Muslims or Messenger of Allah? And the Prophet said, It's for all the Muslims. So being patient in times of adversity, accepting the plan of Allah with patience and struggling your best to get out of that is a way to open up our Jannah. We ask Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us paradise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cool our hearts, to take the anger from our souls towards our fellow Muslims and replace that with love and, and happiness and brotherhood. As we ask Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide those who have become Muslim to have the proper understanding of Islam, to gain, give their mothers and fathers guidance. We ask Allah by the weight of His arsh, all of his names and attributes and the number of his creation to guide the parents of those who become Muslim, to guide their brothers and their friends and their loved ones. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite husbands and wives back together that have had any issues. We ask Allah to bring the children back to their parents. And we ask Allah to bring the parents back to their children. We ask Allah to alleviate the burden of the oppressed, to remove the yoke of oppression from our Muslim brothers and sisters all around the globe, as well as all of humanity. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يَجْعَلْنَا سَبَبًا لِمَنِهِ تَدَى كَمَا نَسْأَلُهُ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَى أَنْ يُدْخِلَنَا فِي جَنَّتِهِ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ كَمَا نَسْأَلُهُ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَى يَجْمَعْنَا مَعَ حَبِيبِنَا كَمَا أَمَنَا بِهِ وَلَمْ نَرَاهُ صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين